G'day folks. Well tonight in addition to painting some plastics on the motorcycle I'm going to uh, finally get around to rebuilding these mo or one of these motors. Well I should say making one out of the two and putting new bearings in it. Um, these are X cooling tower motors that were donated by Brad aka V8 Jagnut on YouTube. Uh, check out his channel V8 Jagnut. He was nice enough to donate these motors. They are made by Tico Electric in Taiwan. They are very good quality motors actually, despite being Taiwanese. Um, Tico, I actually have a Tico VFD myself and that's a nicely built unit as well. So these are X cooling tower motors. This one still has a bit of a fan hub attached to it. It's busted off around the center. And they both sound like they have rocks in them because that's why they were replaced. They were replaced because the fans in the cooling towers were making horrible noise and these motors aren't really worth rebuilding for a company's point, from a company's point of view. An individual like myself who has hobby time to do it, fine. I can pull it down, put new bearings in it. Um, this one needs a new fan and shroud, um, which this is going to be the donor of. One of these motors isn't, isn't coming out of here alive. Now, I'm guessing it's this one because it's had water through the windings the whole terminal box and state has been flooded with rain water whereas this one's spotless and it's also a two horsepower this is a one horsepower this is a two horsepower the stator and rotor are a little bit longer on the two horsepower but they seem to be the same diameter so I'm hoping the shroud and fan fit the same I know the output shaft is the same diameter and the key slots the same size it's just a slightly longer one because in induction motors the longer the rotor and stator is the more torque it has so you get more horsepower out of it with a longer stator and rotor I'm guessing three horsepower could even have the same physical diameter but just be a little bit longer again and you get three horses out of it but this one is nice and clean, it hasn't had moisture in it so I want to fix this one up I don't have a good two horsepower 220 volt or 240 volt three phase motor as it is. Uh, the only other ones I have are dedicated 415 volt. You can't change the actual winding from star to delta or vice versa. Um, this one's the same. It's 240 volt three phase or 415 volt three phase. Only two amps at 415 volts. So yeah, they're not a, not a bad motor. I'm just going to pull them both to bits and uh, see what parts I can salvage if it's worth salvaging any of it I mean if I can't make one good one out of the two they're all they're both scrap but either way it's worth a try yeah I can understand why they were complaining about the noise I think that's the worst one <laughs> that sounds real rocky there's no grease left in those bearings only rust Oh, well, that's a shame. It's done the same thing. It's all fallen apart. It's made out of uh, glass-filled nylon, so naturally it breaks down after a while. Bugger. I'll have to find a motor at the scrapyard that has a similar size and just adapt it. Looks like it's got a rubber bushing on it anyway. That thing there, it's a rubber bush. I'll find a way to fix that. That's the least of my worries. Cowling can go on afterwards. Main thing is I get the main, the rest of the motor together and new bearings in it. Okay, well that's the uh, one horsepower part. Only part I'm salvaging is this end housing because the uh, one on the two horsepower is badly rust damaged. This one's a bit better. I'm gonna clean it up, repaint it. I'll repaint the whole thing anyway. The stator on this one doesn't look too bad, it's just had a lot of water in it. Might uh, clean it up and do the coke can test with the VFD. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people have seen that video on YouTube. A couple of guys running a motor stator with a VFD and they just hold a coke can on a wire inside it and the can starts spinning. Except I might try a couple of ball bearings or something. So, I won't throw this one in the bin just yet. At least let the smoke out of it anyway. And again, the rotor's pretty rusty. 
That bearing's not bad. The other one, it's the front one that's the worst. Oh, sorry, that's the back actually. That's where the fan goes. So that's all trashed. Now, this cowling fits perfectly on this one. It's the same frame, it's just a long version of it. The frame's D90L and that one's D90S. So it's probably S for short, L for long, or something like that. And that's the better front end housing. Because that one's pretty damn rusted. Just got to get this thing off next. There we go. Angle grinder and a big, big bloody hammer and screwdriver. That's all you need to get something like that off. That's how far I cut down into it, just till I touch the key. And, uh, yeah, just knock her off. Get off. <laughs> sort of three quarters on there, something. There we go. What's left of the water seal. Or moisture proofing seal. Yeah, not too bad. That'll clean up. Replace this end housing and good to go. Well, new bearings of course. Fairly big bearings. I don't have them in stock at the moment so I'm going to have to buy them in. But they're cheap enough. Look at the holes and pitting in this stuff. Or dross. It's called dross. Porosity. Very cheap nasty pressure cast aluminium. High pressure injection die casting. You can use whatever shit aluminium you want and it works, pretty much. That's how they get rid of all the crappy grade aluminium. You can't cast that stuff with gravity die casting. It doesn't run, it goes porous, ugh, oh, horrible. I spent four years in a foundry and you learn all about what casts and what doesn't. At least as far as gravity is concerned, I've never done pressure die casting. All I've done is sand and uh, gravity die casting. It's all good fun though. Okay, well the bearings are a standard 6205Z. Uh, I've got a new old stock one in, in stock at the moment, but unfortunately I don't have a second one, so I can't finish it tonight. Um, I'm going to have to get one during the week. But either way, I'll give this a clean up on the lathe. I'll polish this up. Get the rust and crap off it. Definitely had water in there too, but that's not an issue. It's all solid rotor. Yeah. I'm just painting the housings and things. Might just leave it in the primer grey. I might give it a very light top coat on something. It's all etch primer. I think the original motors are a fairly flat grey anyway. Like that sort of grey. I'll see what cans of surplus I've got in the uh, paint cupboard. But either way, I've got one bearing. Just need another one. Otherwise I'd have it finished tonight. Oh. Might as well stick this thing in the lathe and polish the uh, bearing surfaces. Okay, nearly done. Just got to get a new bearing for this end, probably tomorrow if I can. And then we'll chuck it together and do a test run. That will be a separate video. For now I'm just going to put this one up as it is. Not a lot else going on tonight, so... Might as well clean up and just keep painting things. I'll try and get this bike finished. I should have some fun with that one day. It'll be a lot of fun. There's also a whole pile of stuff to uh, burn out and blow up and try and fill my destruction quota for the month. There's heaps of bits and things in there which probably shouldn't be microwaved or subjected to very high voltages or amperage. But find ways of doing that. So that's the end of this one for now and thanks for watching.